Hello, I'm Dr. Kevin Winthrop at the Oregon Health and Science University. Tuberculosis, or TB, and other opportunistic infections occur more frequently in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, or RA. And this risk is elevated by the use of therapies such as prednisone and TNF blockers. However, less is known about the risk of opportunistic infections in small molecule therapies. Tofacitinib is an oral Janus kinase inhibitor used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. To evaluate the risk of TB and opportunistic infections, we undertook a retrospective evaluation of all cases of TB and opportunistic infections reported within the Tofacitinib Clinical Development Program for RA. For this analysis, we reviewed data from a variety of trials. Six phase two trials, six phase three trials, and two open label extension trials. A total of 5,671 patients were included across different treatment groups. In the phase two studies, patients were screened for TB, and those testing positive were actually excluded from enrollment. In the phase three studies, patients were screened, and those with latent TB were allowed entry into the studies if they agreed to start INH and continue an INH course or isoniazid course for a full nine months during the conduct of the trial. In the analysis for this current paper, we define the following infections as opportunistic. These included mycobacterial infections, fungal infections, multidermatomal herpes zoster cases, and other viral infections associated with immunosuppression. We then calculated crude incidence rates per 100 patient years for all of these infections. Overall, we identified 60 opportunistic infections, giving a crude incidence rate of 0.46 per 100 patient years. All events occurred in tofacitinib-treated patients. Furthermore, in phase three studies, the crude incidence rate of opportunistic infections with tofacitinib 5 and 10 milligrams twice daily were 0.2 and 0.93 respectively. Although the rate was higher in patients on the 10 milligram twice daily dosage, the difference between these dosages was not statistically significant. TB occurred with a crude incidence rate of 0.21 per 100 patient years. 26 cases were reported. Of these, 20 occurred in those taking the 10 milligram dosage. All cases had either negative screening results at study entry or a history of prior adequately treated TB. The median time between starting tofacitinib and TB was 64 weeks. In phase three studies, no cases of TB occurred with tofacitinib five milligrams twice daily. The crude incidence rate in the 10 milligram group was 0.53 per 100 patient years. Other opportunistic infections occurred with a crude incidence rate of 0.25 per 100 patient years and at a median of 40 weeks after tofacitinib start. In phase three studies, the incidence of non-TB opportunistic infections trended higher in patients with 10 milligram twice daily dosage, although again, this difference was not statistically significant as compared to the five milligram dosage group. With regard to TB, 21 of 26 cases occurred in countries with high background TB prevalence. As you can see from the table on this slide, the TB rate varied closely according to regional background TB risk. In total, 286 patients were reported to have untreated LTBI or latent TB infection upon screening. All of these patients completed one month of isoniazid prior to entry to the trial, and all completed a nine-month course of isoniazid during the trial. Importantly, none of these patients developed TB. In looking at the top two rows of this table, we also noted that patients using tofacitinib and isoniazid together were no more likely to develop significantly elevated LFTs as compared to those patients using tofacitinib without INH. In this regard, concomitant therapy with tofacitinib and INH was well tolerated. In summary, within the global tofacitinib RA development program, we observed that opportunistic infections among patients receiving tofacitinib occurred fairly rarely, and they were less frequent in patients using the five milligram twice daily dose. Furthermore, TB was rare in regions of low and medium TB prevalence. And most importantly, our data support the utility of screening for TB prior to tofacitinib start, and that patients with latent TB can be successfully treated with isoniazid and tofacitinib together. Lastly, I'd like to thank the patients and the investigators conducting these trials, 
and the annals of the rheumatic diseases for the opportunity to present these results. Thank you.